looking for longevity lifestyle designers. This is Governor Your Secrets of Longevity.com. So I just got a question about a week ago on an old video of mine. And I'll bring up the topic once again of how long can we live, essentially. And there's been more recent, I wouldn't call them claims because they're based in fact, but they're uh, predictions for how long human potential longevity could be in the future. And, well, I'll first post the question. So are people alive today possibly going to live to be a thousand or more years old? Uh, it is a very controversial statement, obviously. I believe it the first major person to say it, at least well-known person to say it as a prediction, uh, was Aubrey de Grey. And he's very credited. He has a lot of theories that are progressing towards this being a reality in terms of... Uh, the plan that he sort of laid out for all these different areas of medical research to begin moving towards, and it's happening. Um, so the idea of technological advancements accelerating uh, faster than people age uh, would lead us to eventually conquering the things people die of at, say, 130, before people actually reach the age of 130. So there's that point where technology advances so fast that we can address the problems that might come up as people get older and older. Now, uh, there's obviously a whole ton of baggage that comes up for people when they hear statements like this, and I'm not going to try and address that in this video because Aubrey de Grey and these other uh, transhumanists and other scientists do a great job in uh, sort of explaining that away. I mean, just to give one example, people say, well, I don't want to live that long because I'll be old and decrepit. It's like, well, that's the idea. If you're old and decrepit, you're going to be close to dying, so we're wanting to correct those things through technological advances. And I have a channel that you obviously recognize as being uh, heavy into the topic of longevity. It's right there in the username. Um, but I don't focus a whole ton on the medical side of things because, you know, there's other people that are, have greater expertise in that. And I do report on it from time to time, talk about things like stem cell therapy and uh, other advances that are more as part of the mainstream medical model, which are completely legitimate. I don't uh, negate them. I, the things I talk harshly and critical of are things that are more band-aid approaches to health issues that seems to be quite common in allopathic medical care. So medical technology is a different branch from allopathy, which is more dealing with symptoms and trying to mask up and uh, give a crutch to a symptom. Uh, this medical technology is trying to do things to help clear up stuff that happens anyways, no matter how healthy you eat, how uh, pristine your lifestyle is, there's going to be things like the accumulation of cellular waste as your body gets older. There's going to be the degradation of uh, the ends of your telomeres. There's going to be all these different systems that are known to break down as someone ages, even those people who live to be super centenarians, that small portion of the population. They have things within them that still cause them to eventually die. And I've also at times talked about the more mystical and mythical side of things of health and ancient practices, which I think a lot of people find interesting and exciting, and I do continue to talk about that. I'll talk more about this within this video, but um, what we live in today, our world, is quite different from what a Taoist sage had at his or her disposal, say, 300 years ago or 200 years ago even. So while lifestyle can certainly do a whole lot for improving our quality of life for however long we end up living, but also extending it, there's definitely ways that you can increase life expectancy through lifestyle means. Um, but we're still going to run up against these things which technology can actually uh, counter and improve and fix. And potentially down the road, we're going to see advances happening so quick that people alive today will be living to be 1,000 first person to live to 1,000 is likely alive today, is almost certainly alive today. What Aubrey de Grey predicted a couple years ago, that person might be around 60 at the time they made that prediction, so maybe even 65 today. That person, if they've kept up with their lifestyle to just maintain their body and health integrity as best they can, as they age, uh, the little things that happen that are somewhat unavoidable are going to have solutions, whether it's nanotechnology, stem cell therapy, uh, advances in 
genetic alterations. That that's raises red flags for some people. Anything to do with genes and changing them because they think you know genetic modification. It's a little bit different if there's a proven technique. This isn't something that's just being done and put out to market. If you're young enough, you know that there's going to be time for that kind of thing to uh, be tested properly. Because something that significant on health. Uh, is going to have much better testing than we've seen for genetically modified organisms. But if you could tweak an aspect of your DNA, and yes, it's very complex because you tweak one thing and it affects a whole host of other things, but even something like being able to reverse your telomeres degenerating, and there's already unique things out on the market that can help with that, one of them being TA65, which is a costly supplement, but if it's doing something this significant, it's well worth it. Being able to reassemble and reverse your telomeres from shortening, or even at best halting it, but it's actually been proven through their research to add on telomeres through the production of more telomerase, which is something that drops. So telomerase is the enzyme that helps rebuild your telomeres, but by that reducing over time, then the environmental factors in our lives that cause so much stress wear down our telomeres, like fraying shoelaces, uh, as our cells divide and we become older. So coming back to that idea of the mythical or the mystical, um, the ancient Qigong masters, martial artists, yogis, uh, different people from around the world of different traditions who were often seen as hermits. They would go off into the mountains and practice and cultivate their own health. They were often doing things that we might not scientifically understand today how they helped improve their health in such dramatic ways. But there is increasing evidence of things like meditation and Qigong being very beneficial. And personally, I haven't shut the door and just completely denied the fact that some of those myths may have been realistic. There may have been a time on the planet that there was just a more potent electromagnetic field uh, for whatever reason in the past, and that just naturally allowed people to live longer. You don't know what the effect of absolutely pristine air everywhere on the planet, because the Industrial Revolution hadn't happened yet, what that did for just the average person. You don't know what it was like to have everything, no matter what, be organic. You don't have to worry about pesticides, herbicides, genetic modification. Quality was, of course, something that people wanted to always have there. And in ancient China, a lot of these Taoists would go up into the mountains and consume very old, very concentrated, rare herbs that you almost cannot get today, but you sometimes can. You pay a very steep price for them. And they have unique compounds in them that really aid the body in adapting to a whole manner of stressors. And there just hasn't been enough in-depth research on these things to really know uh, what the potential of them are. I mean, we know things like reishi and ginseng. We've had tons of research on. There's a ton of potential there. And they are phenomenal health supplements and herbal supplements to take. So there are compounds out in nature which can be replicated in a lab. And this is crossing over towards pharmaceutical technology. So this is another issue I see within the holistic health world is a blanket perspective on all things made in a lab, which that's not true at all. Uh, there's definitely an overabundance of many types of drugs which are known to cause way too many side effects and don't actually fix anything. But if you had something that was a unique compound that you could not get enough of in nature that you could create an abundance of and create a product out of it, and it was shown to have this dramatic effect at improving your health, rebuilding telomeres, or doing whatever, and it had no negative side effects, then why wouldn't you want to take that? Coming down to it, 1,000 years, uh, you better buckle your seatbelts up, because if you want to be along for the ride, and you have the drive and the uh, resources, but also the will to enjoy life, because who wants to live to 1,000 if you don't have a happy life? You have to create an enjoyable, happy life. You have to surround yourself with enjoyable people that are on a similar mission to you that aren't telling you that, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. You should die at 80. You should die at 65. People are already living longer due to a whole variety of things. Um, better nutrition, better sanitation to a certain degree, but also sometimes worse sanitation can harm people's health if they're not getting an abundance of certain bacterium. But in large part, I think it's to do with just overall advancement of technology has allowed us to live longer through convenience, through 
you know, not 98% of the population doing back-breaking labor all day. There's still the people that do that. And there's more technologies that allow them to uh, prevent as horrific of a life-altering injury that might come about from, you know, wrecking their back by 35 or 40. So, you know, technology has a lot of potential and it's getting us to a place that if there was some mythical time in the past that people were willing to be 200, as unlikely as that might be, or as likely as that might be, or even, you know, like the Bible says people were living to a thousand or whatever, we may be able to get to a place like that again through technology. I don't see a way that people will be able to do that purely through lifestyle means because there's just too much radioactive pollution in the atmosphere, heavy metals strewn through our soils all over the planet. There's just too much baggage and harm that has been done to the planet, unfortunately, in our environment that we can't really separate ourselves from it. We do the best we can, and we do things that detox these things from the body, and that's part of the strategy to live long enough so that you can take advantage of the coming technologies. But, um, yeah, that's essentially my perspective on that. I like to come in and touch on this subject at times because I think it really inspires some people. Uh, if you're watching this channel, you likely have the desire to live longer, and you don't have that deathist mindset baggage. Um, I mean, if you do have that, I don't mean that as an insult. It's just a matter of determining what gives you the most joy in life and getting down to it. Sometimes it takes some soul searching, uh, but what it comes down to is that we do enjoy our time here in the moment, and you can enjoy it many years down the road, no matter what age you are, especially if you're able to have an able body that allows you to continue to do those things. So let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Like, favorite, and share the video if you feel so inclined. And with that, I'll talk to you next time. Take care and embrace life without limits.